with you. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. gardener's question time. No, 
he used it to try and tell his listeners an important story, an important lesson about the kingdom of God. And he told it about judgment and he also told it about patience. We need to be patient and we have to be patient to let our carrots and beetroot grow. But we also fail at letting God work in our lives. We fail each other at being judgmental and we fail each other when we are impatient with each other. And during this time when we all have to wear masks and be clean and stay separate, we're going to have to be patient with each other. So we're going to enter into a time of just being sorry and penitent at the times where we have been judgmental and the times where we have not been patient with each other. So let's have a moment of silence as we come to God and give him those times where we have let him down or let others down. So let us return to the Lord our God and say this prayer together. Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another in our thoughts, in our words and in our deeds. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past and give us the strength to serve you with clean hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're not going to stand to say the glory, but we will say the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the prayer that collects our thoughts and prayers together on this the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned. 
but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, if we were to sit and watch the fields growing and wait for the harvest, it would be mind-numbing. For one thing, we would want to get rid of the weeds. We can't bear them, can we? And that has been the case throughout history. We human beings just can't bear to sit back and let things go wrong. We just have to interfere and get rid of what we perceive to be bad, wrong, evil even. Now I'm not saying that we shouldn't stand up to things that are wrong. We should. But what about those everyday encounters that we come across? The people we meet, speak to, work with, go to school with, go to church with. Those people that we judge because of their age, their gender, their sexuality, their faith, their skin colour, their politics, their job. The list can go on. But we humans are good at demonising the other person because we don't agree with them or we don't like what they look like. We have first impressions where we decide very quickly whether we think we like them or not. And yet our gospel reading suggests that we should reserve judgment as only time reveals the true nature of a person or situation. Now we can't tell what is in someone's heart by what they look like, what they are wearing or who they are and neither are we meant to. Jesus tells the story of a farmer who sows good seed in the field, but whilst people are sleeping, his enemy sows weeds in the field as well. My garden feels like that. I'm sure someone has cut along and thrown a whole load of weed seed outside. But these weeds look just like the wheat as they grow. In fact, you can't tell them apart. The workers ask the farmer if they should pull the weeds up, but he says no, for risk of pulling up wheat as well. And we had to leave our carrots and beetroots grow for fear of pulling the, those very fine ones out instead of letting them. We had to let them grow until we knew that they were definitely full-grown beetroot and carrots. So he says, best leave it to the harvest when they are both fully grown, and only then will they know the difference. They can then burn the weeds. Now Jesus explains that the farmer is himself and the wheat field is the world. The good seeds he throws are the subjects of his kingdom, you and I. And his enemy is the devil who tries to spoil his kingdom by sowing weeds. Our world is wonderful but we also live with pain and suffering and we've seen a lot of that haven't we over the last few months this world is filled with all sorts of people that do all sorts of things 
some have honourable motivations, some have deceitful and selfish motivations. It can feel that every time we read a newspaper or turn on the news, all we hear about is yet another awful situation. It can feel as though evil is overpowering anything that we know to be good. I often hear, if there is a God, why doesn't he do something about it? Now I can remember an article in Church Times a number of years ago when the comedian Eddie Izzard asked the question, why didn't God kill Hitler? But we are not the only generation to ask this sort of question. The psalmist has asked it too. Why doesn't God step in and correct injustice, fight evil, miraculously find a vaccine for COVID-19? He does, actually, through the good, honourable, faithful and dedicated people of his creation. But sometimes we have to wait, and sometimes we have to wait a long time, namely until the ultimate harvest, no matter how frustrating. The farmer tells his workers that if they tried to pull out the weeds before the harvest, it would kill some of the wheat. The same problem with our vegetable plot. Even when people do bad things, we are not to judge their place in God's kingdom. It's not up to us, and that's hard. It is our job to make the good news of Jesus available to everyone in our community through everything we do to ensure we don't do things that turn people off going to church. It's our job to sow seeds and ensure that every seed sown fulfills its full potential and treat each person as though they are a blade of wheat. There will be prison chaplains who will help many come to Christ and forgiveness. God is the final judge, not us. Sometimes it can feel that whatever we do, the world's distractions just pull people away from any seed that we may have planted, pulling them away from church and turning them from God. But the seeds that are sown are God's kingdom, and nothing can stop his kingdom growing. We may not see the seed grow. We may only have the job to plant the seed. Someone else, may have the job to nourish that seed. It can take years before someone turns to Christ, but when they do, they may say, I can look back and remember what that Christian said to me years ago. One word, only takes one word of something that just does something to someone, and it takes years for that seed to grow. Or it may be that they never actually know that you, we're praying for them to turn to Christ. I had that experience. I didn't know someone was praying for me, and three years later they bump into me at a Christian gathering, and this lady said, wow, what are you doing here? And I said, wow, well, I've had this journey, I've become a Christian, and I'm now, I'm now confirmed, and I'm here, and she said, well, I can take you on my prayer list now, I've been praying for you. In the story, it was impossible to tell the wheat from the weed. It's the same for human beings. We can't tell, and what's more, inside each one of us there is the capacity to be both. Sometimes in life we may find ourselves confused as to which one we are. Fortunately, God gives us all the time we need to let the good seed that has been planted in us bear fruit. We must trust that the God who reaps the harvest knows what to do. We can trust the outcome if God is in control. Now, this is a parable of judgment, patience, and also confidence. God is in charge and will help us work things out. We are not to give up the struggle to do what is right, even when we feel dismayed at how much still needs to be done. But it is the job of the angels 
to sort out who the weeds and the wheat are at the end of time. It is our job to make sure there has been every opportunity for even one blade of wheat to grow and flourish. Now, as we think about how we are to plant God's kingdom and grow his seeds of faith, let us hear the choir sing the prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are unwell, who have had bad news, who feel that they can't go on, that life is too difficult, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died and for those who mourn their loss, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Well, we come to the peace, and of course we can't share it with others. You can share it through a family group. So if you're with someone, do please share, but perhaps look at the, everyone around you and say the peace, not the peace, but where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there I am in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, that's lovely to hear, I must say. I'm not just on the, on the Facebook or the YouTube side, just a little comment. It's really lovely to hear. Peace be with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us. Jesus, our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you 
and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Amen. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So if you do not wish to take communion, then please have your booklet in your hand, and I will give a blessing. So the choir will sing virtually as I share communion with you.
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather from every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who gives patience and encouragement, give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ, so that with one voice you may glorify the God Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. I hope it wasn't too uncomfortable with your masks on, and that um, and we, we managed to have a service together and even some, some music and hear some singing. But, um, I'm sure we, this will get uh, easier to, to do, but um, thank you all so much for coming this morning and thank you to all those that have made it possible for us to be here safely together as well. It's, it's been a, a, a big task and a grand task and I hope that you have felt that um, it was uh, safe to, to be here and worship together. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. So let us declare our faith in God and we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. In response to let us pray to the Lord, we say, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people that through the suffering of disunity they may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice 
and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are unwell, who have had bad news, who feel that they can't go on, that life is too difficult, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died and for those who mourn their loss, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Well, we come to the peace, and of course we can't share it with others. You can share it through a family group. So if you're with someone, do please share, but perhaps look at the, everyone around you and say the peace, not the peace, but where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there I am in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, that's lovely to hear, I must say. I'm not just on the, on the Facebook or the YouTube side, just a little comment. It's really lovely to hear. Peace be with you. giving communion, it's just going to be in one kind. Um, do please um, indicate if you want to receive communion. I shall give you a host, a bread, a wafer with a tongue, <laughs> and I shall come round and put it in your hand so you don't have to come up, okay? So let us say this prayer together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross, he died to save us from our sins, he rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high, and so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Amen. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So if you do not wish to take communion, then please have your booklet in your hand, and I will give a blessing. So the choir will sing virtually as I share communion with you.